Hi guys, this is a this is a, a long video. I'm actually going to chop it up into smaller uh, pieces, but uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, saving multiple objects. Everyone's asking quite a lot of questions about serialization, uh, multiple objects, multiple scenes, um, how to save it as binary data. So I'm going to use the example of a uh, a chessboard to to deal with uh, saving multiple items. So uh, hopefully you can stick with me through these uh, these few videos. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, all that kind of stuff, then uh, please feel free to write a comment just uh, just down there um, and a thumbs up if you like and all that kind of stuff. Obviously. We haven't started the video yet. Um, there's also a link just at the top there uh, to the behind the scenes. So this is how I set up the project and how I got the images and where they're from. Uh, but Brian Proven, by the way, uh, uh, he um, he doesn't. He said he didn't want attribution, but uh, he's getting it. It's uh, his images. So there's a there's a link uh, down there in the the notes um, to uh, where I got the images from. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started uh, after the fade. Right, so if you're interested in, in how I set this scene up, uh, actually I'm going to uh, export this scene just now. So I'm going to grab everything in here. So this is the the entire project that we have so far. Uh, I made no changes to like project settings and things like that. So I'm just gonna uh, export this package. Export. And I'm going to call this exports. And I'm going to call this chess start. Okay, so the that's where uh, uh, there'll be a link just down there in the in the notes uh, where you can actually download this start package. But if you want to see how you know behind the curtain all that kind of stuff, then uh, you're going to want to click on the link up there there's a link to the the um the behind the scenes video it's not listed i don't have it listed um but it gives you sort of how how we got to this point here okay so um our standard chessboard has uh, a number of pieces in it now those pieces are actually um well, let's have a look at a, a board. Okay, so here's a, a standard chess board uh, that I happen to have here. Um, so this is the sort of starting position. This is why we don't use Bing. Here we go. Um, so this is the sort of starting position. So you see white's down at the bottom. We have all the pieces, um, and then black's at the, the, the top there, and we also have our grid layout here. So we want to create this initial um, list of pieces okay so um, that's what we're going to do just now is we're going to create our our classes that are going to define where these values are okay so uh, let's create a new folder called sprites uh, called script and inside there we're going to create another folder called serialization. So serialization and then inside there we are going to call um, this one um, piece. I'm going to open that up. Okay, so our piece cannot be mono behavior. We don't want it to be uh, uh, mono behavior, um, but we do want it to be serializable. Um, and I think I just removed this system there, so we're going to have to add system again. So we press our control dot, and then we get using system. And our piece is going to have um, two properties. It's going to have the the name of the piece or the the type of the piece. Um, and it is going to have um, the position of the piece. So if I go back to my 
uh, browser here, you see that uh, in here, this is the this is the Forsyth Edwards notation created by a Scottish newspaper journalist uh, called Dave Forsyth, uh, and it was improved by a chap called uh, Stephen J. Edwards. Uh, but the best thing is it's supported by computers. So um, the Pawn, the knight, the bishop, the rook, the queen, the king, they're all named P, N, B, R, Q, K. Um, the white pieces are designated using uppercase letters and the black pieces are designated using uh, lowercase letters. So we're going to keep that notation in mind, okay? So that's what we're going to be using here. So string, and this is going to be uh, lowercase type, and then we're going to have public vector 2 position. So this is going to be our piece type. So that's going to be our pawn, rook, knight, bishop, queen, king. I think that's everything, isn't it? Uh, pawn, knight, bishop, rook, queen, king, bishop, rook, queen, king. No, I had that in there. Pawn, knight, bishop, rook, queen, king. Yes, that's right. And then this is our position on the board. Okay, so that is our piece. Uh, and then we are going to have a collection of these pieces inside our actual chessboard itself. Okay, so we go back to our Unity project and we will create a C -sharp script called board. Uh, reload all. And again, we don't want that to be mono behavior, uh, which means we can get rid of our start and update, but we do want it to be serializable. And of course, we need our using system for that. And all the board is going to contain is just a list of chess pieces. So we're going to have public list piece pieces. That's all we're going to have there. Um, and we also need to add our collections.generic. Um, so I'll just zoom in a little bit. And get rid of that there. So this is the uh, collection of pieces on the board. Uh, pieces. Um, and that's gonna, uh, yep, I'm gonna save that there. Make sure we save these files. Um, uh, chess piece. Okay, so that is, what else do we need to do there? I think that's how we're good to go for that. Okay, and then finally we want to have a, a way to deserialize that. So let's just call this um, what do we call this chess serializer. Chess serializer. And of course we need to reload all. This can be a mono behavior. Um, but I think, I think I don't want it to be a mono behavior. I think I wanted to have this as, as something separate. So I am going to leave it as that. Um, and I want to, I want to create, um, a, I want to create like a default layout for our chess pieces. Now our chess pieces have to be in a specific order. So... If I go to here, you'll see that our uh, queen and king line up with each other, as do our uh, bishops, our rooks, um, and our knights. Sorry, that's a rook, that's a knight, that's a bishop. Um, that is a king, and then queen, and then the rest again. And we have the same thing down here. So I want to create like a default position so we can, we can save that out. 
So our chest serializer is going to have to do that. So um, I want to create a board for that. So I'm going to say public board create new game. So I'm going to create a new game. And that new game is going to be basically where the board is. So this is our um, zero, 00 position on our screen. And this is our 7, 7 position on our screen. So that's going to be um, probably backwards to where it's going to be. But that's OK because, yeah, I think that's OK. I mean, we can make up our own rules in our chess game, but that's, that's how we're going to play it. OK, so um, it goes new board. So that's our new board. So we want to create our um, we want to create our pieces. But the easiest pieces to create are the pawns themselves. So int i equals zero, i less than seven, uh, less than eight. Oops, i plus plus because there's eight pawns, and I want to add a pawn to each of this board. Um, so I then want to say um, well, board dot pieces equals new piece. Now that's quite a lot there, so let's get rid of that. So instead of system generic collections, blah, 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 we can do generic up here, and we can just get rid of that. Uh, and then it's it's got the red squiggly line there because we need to return board, so we'll do that just now. So that's everything done there. So that's what we should have just now. So we don't need Unity Engine either. Not yet, anyway. Actually, yeah, we will need it. Oops. Because uh, we need it for Vector 2. So this is what we have just now uh, for our class. If I just pull that down there. So if you want to pause the, pause the video now, now is a good chance to pause the video. Uh, and see what we have now. So this is what we have. We have our, our function here, which is to create a new game. Uh, we create a new board, and then we assign pieces to be a list of new pieces. And what we're going to do now is we're going to, for every single pawn, we are going to add that um, pawn to the board based on the color and also the um, position on the board. So the black pawns are at position um, 0, minus 1. So 0, minus, so that's, uh, they're in row minus 1. And our uh, white pawns are at minus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 6. OK. So piece pawn equals new. Piece on dot type equals p on dot position equals new, and then it's going to be whatever i is, and then it's going to be minus one. Um, uh, if, you, if you're confused by this, the, the reason why I'm saying that is because in our board, if we go back to our co our code here. This is position, this is row zero, and then when we move down y, uh, then it's it becomes minus. So uh, if I, I gave an example in the, the behind the scenes part of this. Um, if I add um, a rook to the scene, so the rook is at position zero, zero. Uh, if I go to y minus one, you see that he moves down one line. And if I go to position minus 7, you'll see that he's now at this line here. So minus 6 is going to be where the pawn lines are for our white pieces. And minus 1 is where they're going to be for our black pieces. And remember that p is for pawn, uh, but lowercase p is for um, our black pawn. OK. So that is our position there. So that's minus eight. And then we need to do exactly the same thing for our um, 
are white pieces, but this is this is the same thing again. So let's refactor this and put this inside uh, its own um, subroutine. So we can do this in a couple of ways. There's a there's an automatic way, but let's do it the the manual way. So I want to pass this pawn type in as a parameter, and I also want to pass in this as a parameter as well. You see that this this remains fixed. This is the sort of logic that goes when you refactor these things, uh, when you remake code and you try and reuse things, is this is fixed, whereas this is variable and this is variable. So if anything's variable, that's your ideal candidate for a parameter. So if I create a, a new function down here, which is going to be private, um, I want to create a pawn. Um, so uh, or I want to create pawns, so I want to say um, void create pawns, uh, pawn color, and it's going to be um, uh, row. Okay, so this is our these are our parameters here. So I'm going to take this for loop, and then I'm just going to drag it down so that it's inside its new function here. And instead of type equals p, I'm going to change that to pawn color. And instead of minus i, I'm going to change that to row. Okay. And then I'm going to say I missed a parameter. I need to pass in board as well. Because I need to be able to add it to the board. And I'm going to say board dot uh, pieces dot add board. Oh dear. Okay. So this is my new function. So I create pawns on the board using this pawn color at this row. And then I'm going to go across all the rows and then I'm going to add a new piece, which is a pawn. It's of this type pawn color. Uh, it's at this position and it's uh, I want to then add it to the list of pieces. So I can do create pawns, and then the board is obviously just board. The pawn color is P for black, and then the row is minus one. And then I need to do the same thing for our white pawns. Board, and then capital P, and this is going to be minus six because it's going to be 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. So this is our minus 6th row here. And that creates our pawns. Okay. So now we need to create our uh, other pieces as well. So uh, we're going to have to go through this rigmarole again, which is... Sorry, I put my hand over my mouth there. Uh, we're going to go through this rigmarole again, which is exactly the same thing as this. So let's create another function that does exactly that. So uh, piece, create piece, and then it's going to be um, board. Um, well, no, we don't need board for this one. We need um, piece type. And then we need vector to color. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why don't I just make this a constructor for piece? And I could, but it also means that because this is serializable, I also have to create a blank constructor for it as well. And then it kind of muddies the water of, the, of this. This is really just data. I'm not interested in putting methods inside our chess piece. It's just data. So that's why I'm, I'm advocating just having these factory methods here. And it, it's the same amount of code, it's just that the code is in a different part of your, um, um, your program. That's, that's all. So I'm going to create a new piece here. Um, and then I'm going to say piece dot type equals piece type. Um, and then piece dot position equals, and I've chosen color here for some unknown reason. 
Uh, I'm going to choose pause for this one as well. And then I'm going to do return piece. And now you're probably thinking, well, that's four lines of code. How can I get that to one line of code? Well, you could also use the, um, uh, you could also specify the values for your object when you create it. So you can have a, a creation list. So in this case, you would then do position equals pause and then type equals piece type. Just like that. And then you can get rid of those two lines. So you can do it that way. Either way, doesn't matter. That's a nice shorthand way of doing it. If you're not comfortable doing it that way, then you can certainly do it the, the, the first way. So you might want to rewind the the video a little bit to get it that way. So that's our create piece. Now what this means though is we can get rid of all of this. We can actually refactor this code out and instead of having this we can then add our pawn. So we can then say instead of having these three lines here we can now say um, create piece create piece and then the piece type is our pawn color and it is at this position here, which is that there, and then we just delete these values. Um, so that's all just done in one one line now. So that's our, our create pawn code is now shorter. So we've, we've reused this code. It also means that if there's any problems with this, we can fix this and then we fix it everywhere. Okay, so that creates our pawn for that. We then need to create the rooks for our um, well, let's create the rooks first. So we want to do a create piece, uh, but that just gives us a piece back. So we want to do board dot pieces dot add create piece, and then the piece is going to be our uh, rook which is our castle over here, and he's going to be at position zero, zero. Uh, we also need to create a rook on the other side of that. I'm missing brackets here, sorry. Which is going to be seven along. Okay, so that's going to create our two rooks there. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but for our black pieces. So we're going to choose rooks here. And then we're going to say that is um, row seven and row seven. Okay. So that's our rooks created. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for our knights and for our bishops and then queen and king. Okay. So this is our bishop, and uh, sorry, our knight. Sorry, our knight, and our knight is one in there, so he's going to be zero one instead of that. So he is going to be one and zero, and he's going to be six in there as well. So zero one two three four five six zero one. Oops, well, that's better actually. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one and six. And then we need to do the same thing for our white pieces. And remember, we need to move them down to the the last row. So that's seven. And that is our knight. Um, but uh, these are actually minus. So remember we're going negative on the Y. So we got our rooks and our knights. Now we need our bishops. So our bishops are one in again. So that's going to be two and five for our bishops. And then for our white piece bishops, we are going to be oops, black 
and black. And that's going to be minus 7, minus 7. And then our last pieces is our queen and our king. So our queen and our king. And that's going to be position three and four. And then the same thing again for our white queen and our white king. And that's going to be minus seven, minus seven. Okay, and I think that's us. We've done everything we need to do there. Okay, so that is our create new game. And I think we're done. Okay, so we have our pawns, we have our rooks, knights, bishop, queen, king. Okay. All right. So we need to do the bit that actually serializes things out to disk. So we're going to do public void save game um, and we're going to choose a board as our input and we are going to do string json equals json utility dot um, to json and then we specify our objects so or our board um, and then we need to find a path to where we're going to save it. So our save file is just going to be inside the persistent user data. And we're going to call it chess.json. That's going to be called. Uh, well, the folder is um, application.persistentdatapath. And our file is going to be chess. JSON. Full path is going to be path. Um, and because this is part of system.io, we need to do control dot using system.io dot combine and then folder file. Um, and then if file dot exists, full path. Delete full path file dot write all text JSON. So if you're not following this, um, don't worry. Um, we also want to put in full path. Uh, there's actually more serialization videos, so if you look up uh, there. Uh, then you'll find links to the serialization. But this kind of follows on from our serialization um, that we've been doing. There's a whole series of videos on serialization. So we write all text to there, and then that should then give us our, um, uh, our save game. So I want to create a new, a new script. Uh, and I'm going to call this one uh, debug um, because we don't, <laughs> we don't have anything else. Uh, and I also want to create a, a button image. So there's our button there. And because we want to be able to save our data and then find it again. So uh, I'm going to move the button a little bit over to here. And I'm going to call text to be, um, I'm just going to call it create, so our game's going to look like that. And then our debug, I want to uh, create an empty object, and I'm going to call this debug chess, and I'm going to add my debug script that I just created. Okay, so it's going to be called debug, and then I'm going to load it up, reload all. So this one we do want to be a mono behavior. Um, and we want this to be a chess serializer inside there. Um, and then when we create this instance, I want to create a new instance of a serializer. 
And then uh, I want to create a public method called button create uh, that when we hit that, it then is going to create a new instance of our serial of our uh, a board. So um, it's a two-step process because I want to keep uh, I want to keep this uh, separate. I want to keep the board creation separate from uh, the writing. So this is sorry the writing out to a file. So this is our save game. So it needs a board, but the only way to get a board is to create a new game. So we're going to call that first. So board new game board equals uh, serializer dot create new game. And then I'm going to call serialize again because I now have values inside here and I'm going to save that to uh, the file. So I'm going to do serializer dot and then save game new game board. All right. So we're almost there, almost at the sort of first part. So um, So our debug chess is here. We have our debug component there. And now in our button, we go to the click event. So this is our click event up here. Click on plus, uh, choose the debug chess object. And then for the function, we want to use button create. Um, and we'll save the scene just in case anything bad happens. Uh, we'll press play and then we'll click on create and nothing will happen <laughs> uh, let's go let's go fish out the uh, the folder here uh, where are we uh, we are in app data. And then we want to be in, I can't remember where this is, local. Um, nope, app data, local low, I think it is. And default company. And then we have chess down here. So you can see all the, the, the games that we've created over the, the, the years here. So we go to chess and then inside here we have our chess um, data. So you can see it's inside users, Sloan Kelly, app data, local low, default company, um, and so forth. So I will uh, right click on that and I'll choose open with sublime text edit do. And you see that we have our pieces in here. Now it's not particularly great because it's all in one row, but I can assure you everything is in there. Um, yeah, this is a very, very long line. So uh, P, B, 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 B. Um, and we should start to see capital P, yep. And then we see uh, where are we? Rooks, knights, everything. Okay, so we've got everything we need in there. So everything is all saved perfectly well. Okay, so we're going to uh, stop there uh, and you'll have to wait till the next video, which uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get out uh, tomorrow. Um, and that's it so for now. So we've got our chess program, we've got the ability to save data and we can, um, well, we can save data. That's, that's what we have so far. So tomorrow we're going to look at uh, deserializing it and getting those values out of there. Um, and then the follow on to that will be to save it as a binary format because uh, people were asking about can you save these things as binary format so we'll, we'll do that as well. And uh, then after that, uh, I think we'll look at using the, this, uh, what's it called again? The Forsyth Edwards notation. We'll look at uh, using that to, to uh, load and save uh, other people's data. So we'll grab, grab a game from, from the internet and we will uh, then deserialize that and try and make a, a chess game out of it. So uh, yeah, that's all coming up. Um, 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. Again, if you liked, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like, thumbs down. But please let me know what you didn't like about it. Don't just thumbs down. It's, you know, it's nice to get feedback uh, either way. Uh, and as always, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I know time is important to people. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, spending some time here. So uh, until next time, thanks very much. Bye. Success, at least for this video.